Hi, and welcome to the Happy Progress Podcast. I'm Alex Harrison. Today, we're here with Debbie Emick. How you doing, Debbie? I'm good, Alex. Thank you so much for having me. It is my pleasure to be here and chat with you this morning. Excellent. Uh, great to have you. To get started, does progress equal happiness to you? Uh, that's a trickier question than maybe it sounds. I mean, I, I honestly think happiness is just being able to be present right here in this moment, right? But then there are things we want to do, uh, progress we want to make. And so learning to balance presence and making progress is, is a trick. It's the trick, right? So sometimes maybe, but if we're too focused on progress, sometimes it's not happiness. It's all how we kind of perceive it, right? And uh, I saw that your your uh, Instagram handle and your website is Imperfect Progress. Uh, yeah. Tell us a little bit about your perspective on that. Yeah, so um, I have been diagnosed with multiple autoimmune diseases, chronic illnesses, and out of searching for health, I began making progress myself. Um, I learned that maybe one of the ways that I had protected myself was to work, was to become like a perfectionist, a people pleaser. And so becoming healthy meant kind of letting go of that sort of unpeeling those layers of perfectionism and people pleasing, um, just becoming really real who I am vulnerable and okay with showing that. Um, and in doing so, I, I have to be imperfect in making my progress, right? That's kind of what uh, making progress is about like learning from the mistakes you make along the way and, and using that to, to keep moving forward. Awesome. Uh, now Debbie has an upcoming book called the other side of perfect one woman's tale of her journey beyond perfectionism and people pleasing to return to her authentic wild self. <laughs> uh, uh, so you mentioned your discovery of the autoimmune disease in, in uh, 2011, I believe, that really pushed you down this path. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell us about what that chronic illness is and how it really affected you and your family. Sure. So, I mean, being diagnosed with autoimmune diseases is usually a long and winding road. And uh, we talked about this before the show, Alex, that once you're diagnosed with one thing, lots of other things tend to pile on. But ultimately, what was found is that I have something called mixed connective tissue disease. And for me, that's a combination of lupus and something called relapsing polychondritis, which specifically attacks cartilage. And so in me, it had attacked the cartilage in my lungs, my trachea and bronchioles, which means they collapse when I breathe. And that became this huge thing. Like, what are we going to do about it? How long am I going to be able to live with that? Am I going to need like medical uh, like intervention, sur surgical interventions like stents. And so going through that diagnosis process was years and then trying to learn to heal from it, recover, become healthy was took years as well. Um, most recently I was diagnosed with something called pulmonary hypertension. So there's just been this long list of things, uh, mm -hmm working through that brought what I thought was like my future into really close perspective and, and made me realize like I needed to quit leave, living my life for someday and I needed to start living it for today and then learning how to design my life that way and learning what true healing, true health really meant and looked like. Yeah, uh, before to get into specifically how you reacted to that, I want to talk about a little bit about mindset because I've had a lot of experience with other people who I've seen get sick and then then they snowball and they just go to the doctor and they kind of deal with it. And then there's people like you who kind of use it as a new perspective on life. And it's almost like, oh, you're reinventing yourself. You're not letting this really determine who you are and where you go. What do you think uh, in your perspective, what makes people tick in that way and the difference between, you know, uh, the, the go getters or someone who's just going to let the diagnosis take over their life? Yeah, I have to say there was working through that for me, for sure. I mean, I was a go getter, right? I told you I was a perfectionist, a mm -hmm. people pleaser. And so I, I've always worked hard mm -hmm. and I feel like this subconsciously gave me permission to sort of rest. And once I was able to realize that subconscious pattern of like, if I need rest, I should 
take the rest. I shouldn't look for a diagnosis or a doctor's permission to say, slow down. This isn't good for your body. Mm -hmm. And so there was a lot of unpacking, like subconscious things, thought patterns, behaviors, but ultimately like I knew I wanted to live a good life. And that was about mindset, right? Um, none of us have anything guaranteed. And so learning to shift that and, and see this as like, uh, you're probably familiar with the obstacle is the way, right? The obstacle in the path becomes the path. Absolutely. And so for, for a long while, that was my mission, right? This was my obstacle. What did that have to teach me about my path and where I was going to go from there? I mean, when all said and done, I'm still a mother and I still have an obligation as a mother to uh, help my daughters live the best life they can. And I couldn't do that if I wasn't able to do that myself first and to show them that. And so that was a big motivator as well. Absolutely. And, and really, that's the foundation for uh, for our whys, right? It's mm -hmm. your it's your family. It, it's what you do. And this podcast is really all about growth. So, uh, you know, and if, if you don't have your health, it doesn't matter how much wealth you get, you're really never mm -hmm. going to be able to get there. So tell us a little bit, first of all, how you learned that you were you were sick and then mm -hmm. how you dealt with it. Yeah. So um, I think there were whispers in my body for a long time and I ignored those until finally I couldn't ignore them. Just uh, pain throughout my body. So trying to mow the lawn uh, afterwards, I couldn't push a shopping cart. My hands and wrists and elbows hurt wow. so bad. And my husband and I are very active. We like to hike and I just had a really, really uncharacteristically painful hike on a Colorado 14er one summer. And when I got home from that and I was experiencing, you know, the other problems, I decided to go to the doctor and, and kind of figure it out. Like I couldn't ignore it anymore. You know, sometimes maybe you listen to the whispers and you slow down and you go figure things out. And I just did not take that path. Um, and so once I, I did that, I, um, I kind of had an idea of what was going on and I knew what to ask for. And for me and for my particular path, um, I had a lot of physical symptoms that could be seen and a lot that showed up in my blood work, which isn't always the case for people with autoimmune disease and chronic illness. So sometimes mm -hmm. it's, it's really learning to advocate for yourself to find the right doctor to keep searching. You know, there's so many doctors and we aren't all a good match for each other. And so, um, yeah, so there was a lot of trial and error. There was one point where I was taking like nine different prescription medications three times a day. Um, and then I did keep searching. I found some doctors that helped me eliminate some of those to actually figure out what was going on and not just throw like all of the autoimmune disease medicines at me. Um, and then I started doing my own work on figuring out what I could control, how I could help myself, how I could learn to heal. And so for a while that was superficial stuff that may not be easy, but it's simple, right? So I worked on my fitness, on how I exercised, how I used my body. I worked on my food, what I put into my body, how it nourished me, um, what I was allergic to, eliminating those kinds of things. Um, and eventually I started working on my mental, emotional health. So I left my job thinking like that will solve all of my problems. And when it didn't, I was faced with this, how did I get here? And how am I still sick? And how am I still in pain? Which sort of gets to the subtitle of my book, discovering the mind body connection to healing chronic illness. Mm -hmm. So I eventually learned I couldn't truly physically heal my body if I didn't go back and address some repressed emotions, some childhood trauma that I had never really dealt with that I had just stuffed. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So originally you, uh, your job, you're, you're a teacher, right? Uh, what did yeah. you teach? Um, I was in elementary education for 14 years. So okay. yeah, a variety of ages. By the time I left, I was doing um, reading and math intervention. So okay. kids that needed some extra help, some extra support, mm -hmm. I, I would work with them. Nice. Yeah. And uh, I imagine you, you going through this, uh, you know, you're, you're growing your family, um, you're, you're thinking about your career, uh, you're preparing for the rest of your life, uh, you know, maybe, you know, uh, thinking event about eventually re re retiring, mm -hmm. uh, you know, 
how does this all play into, you know, adulthood and, you know, dealing with it, you know, financially, uh, you know, how do your kids kind of react to it? Um, you know, how did you change your diet? You know, uh, not a whole long answer, but, you know, how, sure. did, how did that whole aspect change your life? Well, the biggest impact, I would say, was a financial mindset in that my husband and I were both, um, I would say, typical American type story, right? We knew we would get a good job with a good pension because that was safe and we would work until whenever that job said was retirement age and then we would retire and live our life right so it was kind of like hustle grind hustle grind hustle grind until someday we could retire and when this all started becoming clear to me and i you know googled some things it was like i don't even know if i'll make it to retirement let alone what retirement might look like and you're right i was a mom first and i had two daughters that i really wanted to spend time with and be there for with whatever time i had and so you know you know what teachers make it's not a lot but my husband um worked in tech and he made a fine job where he would get, you know, salary increases. And so we just had to have a really real moment, like a conversation about what was important when and what we really wanted out of our life. And from that, I did decide to leave my job. After I left my job, we realized we had a lot more control over um, how we lived our lives than we thought. And we had been savers and we decided to invest some of that money that we had saved rather than just keep saving and saving and saving until someday. Um, and through that, we were able to also have my husband leave his job and begin to really just des design our lives the way that we wanted. And so this illness really was the impetus for for figuring out what we really wanted out of life and finding a way to make that happen now and not at some point in the future. Um, I don't know if I answered your question. There was a lot in that, but mm -hmm. I think that might get to the point of what you were asking. Yeah, I mean, I think the point that uh, the audience uh, is realizing that, you know, we have these things that happen in life with, you know, we go towards pain or pleasure and we're forced into these issues with life. In your case, it, it was pain because you were dealing with it head on. And now I have to see my life from an, a new perspective and not only for myself, from uh, for your family and how you're going to deal with those. Uh, when you've reached these hard points in your life, how, how have you really faced them and then learned more about yourself? Yeah. So at first I would say, um, I use them as ways to continue to like perfect and people please, right? So you you did ask about like diet and nutrition and that kind of stuff, but it was like because I was a like unconsciously a perfectionist, a people pleaser because of things that had happened in my childhood, that's sort of how I kept people at arm's length. That's how I controlled my environment. So I over perfected, right? I I used it to really over control my diet unhealthily over control my exercise, like almost to a punishing amount. Um, until eventually I did find myself in a place where it was, like I said, a really dark moment where mm. I had done everything I thought I could. I still wasn't healthy and I was like lower than I had ever been. And from that moment, I knew that I never wanted to go back there. And so everything was a way to make sure I didn't go back there. And it just so happened that through working on my mental, emotional health, I started to see like physical changes in my body. But the whole time, like learning to design our lives, to become financially independent, to become healthy, I just, I, I mean, I consume material. I'm always learning. I'm, I'm always trying to figure things out. So consuming podcasts, uh, what people have to share, reading, you know, as often as I can, um, and learning from that. So along the way, there's always been people there helping, right? Mm -hmm. Different podcasts that helped us with investing in real estate and becoming financial and financially independent and books. And then when I'm working on my health, it's just like one step leads to the next, as long as I stay open. Mm -hmm. Um, and so with health, it was the same way consuming as much information as I could to learn as much as I could try it, see if it works, try the next thing. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Uh, it's that classic go-getter. Uh, you have these <laughs> intentional inputs that you're bringing into your life, regardless of your situation, and you're maximizing those outputs to actually mm -hmm. intentionally change your life. I love it. Uh, one of the things that, that I've done to essentially document this through my life has, has really been journaling or, or, or just drawing mm -hmm. and, and sketching because I, I do that as well. But the, the ability to get things out of your brain and expose them to the world, just like podcasting is like we're talking about these things that are that are real issues in life. Mm -hmm. uh, the simple fact of, of practicing journaling for me has made a major difference in my life. Do you have things like journaling or meditation that you apply to make you sane? Yeah, definitely. Um, so just by chance, I I came across the Miracle Morning in another podcast, and I didn't really know all of the scientific research for the things that Hal Elrod suggests doing in the Miracle Morning. I just was going to give it a shot and see, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, I started doing the Miracle Morning, and then as I began healing and feeling better, I actually started reading about all of the physical health benefits of doing the things in the miracle morning. And now they really are like a mental health practice for me. So definitely meditation and journaling. And, you know, I've since learned that, um, that there's a lot of research out there for journaling to heal from trauma or repressed emotions. And so I reference a book about that in my own book. But, um, you know, you could tell for me, I didn't want to deal with some things from my childhood. And so like choosing to go to a psychologist felt like a big, huge thing for me, but being able to sit down and journal for like 20 minutes a day and get it out. You're right. There is something completely healing, completely cathartic about that. And, um, there are physical benefits to that. You know, people who have repressed emotions or not dealt with some things have a much higher risk of having heart disease and lung disease, which are two things I have. And so uh, that sort of gave me permission to, to start that ball rolling. And now, yeah, it's definitely a practice. Writing the book, I would say, was a lot like journaling. Yeah. Uh, what other, do you have any other books or tools that, that you can, um, advise for for practical use of improving uh yeah life. so i mean specifically for people struggling from autoimmune disease and chronic illness if i could back up 10 years ago and have this information presented to me who knows if i would have been receptive to it at that time you know what they say about when the student is ready the teacher appears but um there is a lot of work and research out there about the mind-body connection. And one major doctor in that realm, his name is Bessel van der Kolk, and he wrote something called The Body Keeps the Score. And another person who speaks a lot about it is a doctor named Gabor Mate, and he wrote a book, When the Body Says No. Mm -hmm. And so I think had I found those a lot earlier back, I would have felt a lot more control a lot less seeking permission and guidance from people with like md after their title and a lot more digging deep into what might be going on in my body um it's just about like the patterns we create with our nervous system and the physical effects that those chemical um hormonal reactions have on our body mm -hmm. um and so for, for chronic illness, autoimmune disease specifically, those are two that I would definitely recommend. Mm -hmm. Some other authors that were helpful for me and my own mental, emotional health, and you like to talk about mindset, are Brene Brown, um, helping me deal with shame and becoming mm -hmm. vulnerable and being okay with that. And then someone named Glennon Melton, um, she talks a lot about like coping mechanisms that we have, uh, to protect ourselves as well. So mm -hmm. awesome. Uh, great suggestions. Uh, and, and if you do, uh, like Brene Brown or have, uh, not watched her movie on Netflix, mm. excellent. Very right. good. She's an amazing good. speaker. And even if you don't think you're into shame or vulnerability, it's all about courage and being brave and putting yourself out there. Mm -hmm. And because other people are going through these things as well. And the more you can relate to them, the more they understand your story. And then you, you essentially grow together. So uh, really great recommendations there. 
So tell us a little bit about your book, The Other Side of Perfect. Uh, how do we get there? Uh, um, yeah, great question, right? So um, it's really about everything we've been talking about. Uh, getting sick, thinking I could fix myself through some superficial um, band-aids, which I'm not saying are not helpful. It's not, you know, I'm still moving my body, getting my heart rate up as often as I can. I'm mm -hmm. still really careful about what I put in my body. Um, but the ultimate like healer for me has been going back and dealing with some things that I just didn't want to deal with. Right. That was the hard work and getting healthy took going through that hard work. Um, and so this is the story of that, how I started, how I got through it. And hopefully it tells, it helps other people who are struggling with these same issues go through it as well. So there are some journal prompts in there at the end of some of the chapters. And then I created a, a companion journal to go along with it for anyone who, who wants to go through the book and experience their own healing, um, do their own journaling and, and see how, how it can benefit them. Excellent. And uh, the book comes out in uh, February of, of 2021. And I believe you can uh, initially check it out if you wanted to pre-order at gobucketyourself.com slash books. Correct. Yeah. That's where you can get the digital journal too. I'm not sure if this is, uh, if this will air before it is mm -hmm. released. If someone pre-orders it, they get that digital journal free. So they should be able to find it anywhere you, you buy books. But if you want to go to go bucket yourself, dot com forward slash books you can easily be taken to buy it from there yeah nice uh, as we start to close out I'm, I'm i'm thinking about how this all really comes together because as we go through life in our careers we want all of these accomplishments and that really creates stress and, and pressure on ourselves and that starts to really mountain up over time as you go through maybe your 20s or your 30s you have all these big accomplishments and then maybe yourself or your, mm -hmm. one of your family members gets sick, you start to realize, you know, maybe this stress wasn't good for me. Or maybe these things that have won that are life are not what I should have. Mm -hmm. You know, how, what advice do you give to others to, you know, take that perspective and, and reevaluate uh, their own lives and really grow, you know, before the, they get a disease or, or someone else in their, in their life does become sick? Oh, that's a, that's a really big question, right? Um, what I think kind of gets to the heart of it is seeking uh, validation or happiness outside of ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. So we become addicted to either this destination, like when I make $200,000 a year, then I will be happy, then I will be successful, or to these things that we think will give us value and worth. So when I get the Lexus or whatever, the car, then I will be worthy. Then I will have value. Then I will be happy. And I think no matter what it is, um, until we find that validation and worthiness within, we won't ever find it outside of us. And mm -hmm. I don't know what the path is. Maybe some people have to get disappointed by getting to the destination and never really being happy. And, but hopefully we can shortcut that, like you're saying, by learning from other people who have gotten there and said, Hey, this, this is not the path. Um, but yeah, I would say just become aware of your thought patterns, your desires, detach from them so that you can actually look at them without judging them or, or thinking, that that is you, right? So you are not your car. You are not the amount of money you have in the bank. You are not your illness. You are not your pain. You aren't any of those things. And when you can just sort of detach from them as being part of you and then look at them kind of like from above, right? You can decide like, oh, is this really what I want? Is this really where I want to go. And if it is great, if you want that Lexus, go for it, but look at it from a detached way of like, no thing is going to make you happy. No job is going to do that for you. Mm -hmm. So you have to decide, you know, what, what it really is about for you. Mm -hmm. I love this, this thought process of living 
with our own expectations. And instead of all the expectations of others, how much money we make, what car we drive, all these other things, all those things don't become important later in life, trust me. And you may want them now, enjoy them now, because you know, in the future, it may not be something that's on your roadmap and your path. So mm -hmm. let's tell people a little bit more about you and how they can find out how to connect with you. Sure. Well, definitely go bucket yourself.com forward slash books or anything at go bucket yourself.com. My husband and I also have a podcast that's an extension of that called one life live it by go bucket yourself. You can find that anywhere you find your podcast. And if I ever hang out on socials, it's at Instagram. And it's what you said, imperfect progress dot me. You can find me there chat, hit me up, ask me anything. I'm I'm here. Awesome. And check out her book uh, coming out in February of this year. And thanks for your time. Have a great day and continue to make happy progress. Thank you for making happy progress part of your day. How are you going to take advantage every day? Please let Alex know by visiting the website happyprogress.com. Together we will prove that progress equals happiness.